Hiya, and welcome back to Password, the game that teaches us that... Um... Take the secret tunnel song from Avatar The Last Airbender and replace it with- and replace the word tunnel with vault. And you have this entire game. What is going on with my character? He should be, like, doing a little dance with it. What is going on? Why isn't he moving? He should be moving. Yeah, there we go. Wait. No, not shaking. Uh... Alright, there we go. He's moving the... W Fuck. I just deleted him. Damn it. I know, that's, that's the way it's designed. I accidentally made him go away. Anyways, let's just hop right in before I just sit here all day. Getting ready first and foremost included a shower to freshen up and relax. If anything, the hot water cleared my head a little bit. It had the added benefit of waking me up more, too. Roswell said I should get ready, and I assume that meant gathering a few things to make this investigation go a little smoother. The first. My notebook. Control-Alt-Delete his OC. Oh, no! I figured that while I was intending... I figured that while I was intending to use this as more of a journal, having things written down might just be a better way to keep my thoughts organized. I wondered if Frostwell was going to bring his, but all I knew is that I should probably bring my own to take my own notes. Next up... Phone. Just in case I needed to call someone or use something on it. I guess it could also be used as a backup notebook, but that's only an option so long as it stays charged. I'd already let it run out once, so having something like my notebook makes sense to have as my primary method of recording information. Ready to go, I returned to the foyer to look at for the others. Seeing no one around, I headed downstairs, expecting them to maybe have gone on ahead. Guys? What is this music? A few more steps forward and I heard them talking, and I heard them nearby talking quietly about something. I couldn't quite make it out, but eventually they stopped, calling me to join them in front of the vault. Glad you could join us, Dave. I looked to Orlando, who seemed bothered by what we were doing, but this was for his own good. I got the vague details from Orlando, but why don't you bring me up to speed? Last chance, we don't need to do this. I think we do, Orlando. I think if we do have any chance in making sure it can't happen again, right? <laughs> he scratched his head. Wait, did I read that? Yeah, I already read that. He scratched his head looking between Roswell and I. I didn't need to look at Roswell. All I had to do was keep my eyes trained on Orlando when he made eye contact. Okay. So, uh, a few nights ago I stopped Orlando from spending the night here, right? Right. Would have been three, four days ago? Something like that anyway. Okay. But why? This comes down to what I saw in the vault, how Dave died. There was silence from all three of us immediately following Orlando's comment. My eyes looking towards the door, after a while of no one talking, I continued with the explanation. Could Orlando cook Roswell and feed Dave? We were just hanging out, but I went to the vault after noticing Orlando wandering off to go and check something. When I found him, he had a knife and, well, came clean. A knife? Why? Hmm. Hiya. I was going to use it to fight whoever tried messing with the vault. After all, if I saw Dave die, then someone would have needed to do it. Someone would have needed to do something to put that image in my head. Right? Well, that's something at least. Where does that leave us? With this? I gestured at the vault door and watching as Roswell thought it over, setting aside his notebook. That's an easy one. We need to know what you saw. After all, you came down here at some point, saw Orlando, and went to save him from doing, well, what he said, right? It was just me sleeping, right? With a kitchen knife? Right, you were right there on the ground. A slight smile on your face and the knife on the ground next to you. No blood, nothing. And the word used? Sentence. 
Oh shit. Roswell then paced around the room looking at the vault, the door leading in. R Among running his hands along the walls and kicking the floor. What are you doing? Coming up with conclusions. Uh... Alright, so if Orlando was keeping guard of the vault in your vision, explaining the knife, then the only point of entry would be the door we all used to get into this room, right? No chance of the vault door self opening? It's unlikely. I'm just going off an assumption, but if you were on your back or your front? Uh, on his back. Why? Well, if he was expecting someone to come and use the vault, he'd be facing away from it. Any attack from behind would make him fall on his front, right? I guess that makes sense. But what about the state of the body? Hmm. Orlando filled him in on what he told me, including his theory about the lethal injections and such. For me, I gravitated towards the keypad looking it over. It didn't seem overly complicated, but whatever it was seemed bulky enough to prevent anyone from tampering with it. I thought about what Oswin had said, and about how and about what could be behind this door, and turned around to see a smile form on Roswell's face. Pancaronium bromide. Huh? Science? It adds up, doesn't it? I'm going to have to agree with Orlando on this one. The description given seems to match up to what I know about it, at least. I'm lost. Of course you are. So you really think what Dave thought with me having been killed by lethal injection? If that's all we've got to go off of... There's only a few things that fit it. Without knowing period of time or having an autopsy report at all, it's hard to really know. You fucker. There's nothing else we can use? Oh, I didn't say that. If Orlando was killed with lethal injection, or at least the Muxel relaxant part, then we can start narrowing down the suspects. We can? Really? Yep. Pancuronium bromide. Pancuronium bromide is a controlled substance, as you might imagine, given what it's used for. Only someone with, well, ability to legally get it really just comes down to anyone with a medical license. I froze knowing one person immediately who fit that criteria in this very house, or at least someone who might have still had his license if he hadn't lost it. It's funnily a common enough thing to find in hospitals, too, but you'd know that already, right, Dave? Uh, no. No? Your mother never talks about what she does at work? She had, but not to the point of explicitly naming chemicals. Even then, I wouldn't just remember something like that, would I? Okay, but how do you know it, then? My dad works with criminals a lot. Sometimes the case doesn't go right and well off to the, uh... Well, I guess it's not the electric chair these days, but you get my point. You, on the other hand, would know about it because of your family, right? I looked to Orlando, unsure of what to do here, but figured I'd try and help out. It's time to drink water. 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 I looked to Orlando, unsure of what to do here, but, fi but figured I'd try and help out. What would bankers need with something like that? Roswell huffed, looking at me quickly before going back to Orlando. He doesn't know. No, I told him. I assumed he already knew, but apparently not. Oh, well, that makes things easier. Dave, I already know about Orlando's family. It's fine. Really? I'm fairly certain Haas knows. Either that or he doesn't really care. I would have expected you would have caught on being the son of a cop after all. Hey! Orlando's just Orlando. It doesn't matter what his family does, right? He's a good enough guy. It never crossed my mind. With a slight sniffle, Orlando threw an arm over my shoulder. You are pretheth to think that, Dave. I wouldn't be so quick to say that. If you looked peaceful in the vision Dave got, our suspects are limited to people that you'd drop your guard ar completely around. Namely... Sal and Dave. Me? Unless I'm wrong about Sal. Dave is way too precious. Oh, hi, a pack. Orlando stepped away from me towards Roswell, smoke wafting from his nostrils. How dare you accuse either of them? They're friends! 
Don't blame me. They're likely suspects. If you're not going to see reason about it, then what's the point? Unless you're going that close to Haas without any of us seeing, only Sal and Dave fit the criteria of people you'd relax around unconditionally. I moved Orlando back gently while he fumed, looking to Roswell. I don't think Sal will have it in it to kill Orlando. He looks at him like a brother. Exactly. There's another problem anyway. Sourcing the stuff would be hard enough for I... For either of them, so chances are they are in the clear. Hard enough to get it without worrying about administering it without a fight. Yeah, I'm starting to see why you all hate Roswell. Oswin. It had to be, right? A former doctor living in the same house, but a lot of that hinged on Orlando having met him before. But this was before he didn't become known to everyone. Or at least before I'd met him. Had he planned to kill Orlando and then meet with me when that didn't work? Well, it's a no-brainer that obviously my family hath enemies, and I'd be a target. You tend to just get used to that being your reality. Agreed, or at least that makes sense to me. If Dave only found out about your family recently, too, that rules him out as a likely suspect, given he has no motive. Sal, though. I tried to keep Sal out of it. I really did. See why I hate Roswell and everyone hate Roswell. We should just kill him now. I don't think that's an option. I haven't exactly told him, but I think he knows. He's met my parents, a couple bodyguards, the Thothiath. I think the assumption was that he was my bodyguard, all things considered. Is that so wrong, though? I mean, he k kind of would fit the role, sort of. I guess. What about the others? Tyson, Dean, and Haas, I mean. All unlikely, if your recollection of what you saw, Kurt, was ac is accurate. If Orlando was on guard for someone potentially looking to use the vault or do something ha do someone harm, any of them would have put him enough on, enough on edge with that knife. With a the knife, they'd get stabbed. Password is like Final Destination meets Clue, but with an all-gay guy cast. Which, given you didn't mention blood at all, and that Orlando is peaceful, I'm assuming no fight happened in this scenario. What? What about Benson? Same problem. Would you trust Benson approaching you with the syringe while you were out doing a stakeout with a knife? Probably not. So, who then? Had to have been someone, right? Silence followed my question. Orlando staring at... Roswell staring at Orlando, seemingly conflicted. When he finally spoke, it was quite as if he were stepping on eggshells. Yes, but we can't prove it. I sat down on the ground, looking about the room. It seemed really plain, almost too plain, outside the door that, for now, remained closed. Well, if that's all there is to it, maybe we should take our search somewhere else. But where? Somewhere that might have that muscle relaxant. Not that I know where that is, but that's the only lead we have right now. I'm just drinking right now. Alrighty. Hey, guys. I was only half listening to them talk, but something was bothering me about the room the longer I sat there. Does this room seem too normal to you? Normal? We're talking about the same room, right? Orlando walked over to the vault door and knocked on it, the metal sound echoing off the walls. Yeah, like, I don't know. For something that is something so important, I would have thought there'd be something more to this room. Well, I've had a good look. If you've got any questions, I'm happy to answer them for you. I'll try to, at least. Ask about what? Well, it'd be echoey. The room would be echoey. Like, like I'm assuming that it's an all-concrete room. Secret tunnels... I ran my hand along the wall nearby before looking against Roswell. Secret tunnel. Through the mountain. Secret, 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 secret tunnel. Anything notice notable about these walls? Aside from being solid. No. Really? Nothing like a secret compartment or something? No hidden panels or vents to let some sort of gas in to knock us out? Hiya. Why would gas get vented into the room? Oh, for the blacking out part? Yeah. 
You can accomplish that sort of thing in other ways, too. Which seems more likely, given there's nothing special with the walls as far as I can tell. What other sorts of things? I remember my head hurting, but I always just assumed that it was because I fell over and bumped it. Well, sound is one way. Sound? Like listening to it really loud that it makes your ear ring? Kind of. It's less that and more the frequency. At the right pitch and... You can knock someone out cold. Or do any number of things. I read about it once, but didn't find it too interesting. Yeah, that's fun. That's alright. <laughs> Actually, what is that frequency? What is that frequency? Because I'm going to fucking use it tonight. Okay, uh... Sound... Frequency that makes someone pass the fuck out. All I got was the brown note. All I got was the brown note. <laughs> All I got was the brown note. <laughs> Fucking South Park. Fuck! The frequency that makes you pass the fuck out. <laughs> if you've seen South Park, then you know exactly what the brown note is. Fuck! <laughs> fuck! Yes, they are adorable. Back your remotes are adorable. <laughs> But that need a speaker, and you said there's none of those? True, but if it's resonating through the wall into you, it could still be affecting you. No telling it's on the other side of these walls, and this isn't really something I know too much about. But that could be something to consider. Alright, what are we asking about next? <sighs> the floor! While I was sitting there, I knocked on the floor, wondering if something would give. Anything notable about the flooring? Roswell seemed to think it over a little bit before shaking his head. I don't think so. Really? After all that, that's your response? Hey, I don't know everything. It just looks like a regular floor to me. Concrete, sure, but aside from what you're from that, you're seeing what I'm seeing. You know, is it just me or does it look cleaner than the rest of the basement? Uh. Cleaner how? Maybe newer cement? Could have been installed after the mansion was built as an additional room. Or maybe this was just in need of a new floor. Is that even how that works? I would have thought that when you build a house, you... Kinda need to start from the bottom and work up? What about stuff above it? I think I remember something about you being able to suspend upper floors with support beams while you work. Really? For a three-story health. What about all that weight? Hey, we don't know exactly how much of this room is actually under the rest of the house, right? Either way, it's not all that important. I mean, we could probably figure it out if we went back upstairs. Let me turn down the sensitivity of my microphone. It's not important. Regardless of when it was made or installed or built or whatever, there's nothing special about the floor. Just a concrete slab as far as I can tell. So, no secret doors or floors below this one? At the very least, not under this room. Or if there was, good luck getting there without busting through the concrete first. The door! Are the doors anything special? This room has two doors. One to enter this room, and the other is the vault door itself. Okay, bye. Ah. One's a lot easier to open than the other, that's for sure. And they're both heavy, or at least I'm assuming the vault one is made of what looks to be reinforced metal. But you could have told that just by looking at it. Is it anything like a bank vault door? Not, not really. They're a bit different, maybe a little more durable than this. Because your parents are bankers. Hey. 
I'll have you know it's part of dragon culture to knowing how best to protect your money. Knowing what security a bank has is part of that. I looked through Oswald who seemed to have the same thought as me. Chances are, chances were that it wasn't just dragon culture that was a contributing factor as to why Orlando was taught about bank vaults. Either way, the door leading into this room specifically isn't all that special. Maybe a little more robust, but I'm not a door guy. I stood up, scratching my head. So, that's it, huh? What do you mean? There, so there's nothing special about this room. Our main lead is Sal, who Orlando was convinced wouldn't do it. And the murder weapon is a thing from a hospital that's hard to get unless you're a doctor. When you put it that way... I'm sorry, a one-off vision just isn't enough to go off of. If I'd seen the vision myself or had some sort of magic to turn the clock back and see how it all happened, that might help. I groaned, scratching my head. See? I knew this was a bad idea. I wouldn't say it was a bad idea entirely. We did learn something of import. We did? All I got from this was that we couldn't narrow down a suspect or a cause, just so we had theories, right? True or not true, we have to make a few assumptions, but we can say that whoever did kill Orlando in your vision was someone familiar to him. The lack of blood means that whatever killed him was an internal attack, poison or organ failure, or something like that. Okay, bye. Yeah. But given he looked peaceful and he was worried about someone coming in to use the vault, chances are he didn't suffer any stress the moment he died. So no heart attack, no poison. Therefore, a muscle relaxant is absolutely fitting the criteria. Okay. But where does that get us? Do you know of any muscle relaxants that are fairly commonplace? Perhaps even available over the counter? I know. Sleeping medication. Even a dose of that could be enough, rather than it being something like pancuronium bromide. Hang on, Death. Not quite right, though. I don't take sleeping medication. And even then, wouldn't I need to swallow something? Ah, right. Well, nuts, there goes that idea. If you're on edge, guess no one's giving you some pills and a glass of water and getting away with that. Not much of an upside, but at least that brings us around to an injection. Faster and faster again if you were to use, say, a pneumatic injector. Bless you. I didn't sneeze. A pneumatic injector is like... Uh... Oh, it's like an injection gun. Uses air to get stuff into the body fast. Sometimes bones, too. How do you know that? Video games! But even then, it's come up a few times in conversation with Sal. When it got hard scale, sometimes that's just an easier way to administer medication. Medicine. Huh. I didn't know things like that actually existed. As I pondered over my thoughts, Roswell picked up his notebook with a smile. I'm going to go make myself a cup of tea and write all this down while it's fresh. I should have been doing it while we were going, but, you know, I got distracted. Oh, right, I should do the same, huh? Given Roswell's heading to the kit, then, maybe with it I'll go have some tea and just wait until lunch. Great! I'll meet you guys up there. Roswell raced out of the room soon after, not bothering to see if we were going to be followed immediately behind or not. He was in a hurry. As I turned back to Orlando, though, he was shuddering, wiping his eyes. Hey, what's wrong? What happened? Just this. We didn't get any closer, and this, and it was just a reminder that my attempt to try and protect you kind of, well, failed. Badly. Is that so bad, though? Given the vault so you meet dead on the floor, I'd say that's pretty bad. No, I mean, I stopped you from doing it all, and that turned out good, right? With a sigh, Orlando nodded. I guess so, but still. Hey, so I know this really didn't go anywhere, but thanks for letting me try, I guess. It's alright, you only wanted to help, and... Well, it seems bad if I say no to you while wanting to help you back, right? I nudged him gently, figuring I'd try and lighten the mood a little. I have a feeling that we're going to have to try to put a password in. Well, hey, you're helping me out with Dean, right? Does this mean I have to help you land a bear boyfriend of your own so we're even? Oh, Dave, that's a conversation in itself that I'll need to tell you about sometime. Maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow, but I don't want to get into it right now. Yeah, you can. Oh, is it bad? I didn't think anything of it, really. Just later. I'll tell you later. For now, let's just head upstairs to meet with Rothwell. And so we headed upstairs and got ourselves some tea. 
There were still hours until lunch, so we spent some time outside getting some fresh air after being in the basement, wasting the time away until it was time for lunch. We all filed into the dining room before we continued into the kitchen. I don't know why we didn't just take the other corridor, but perhaps we were all just intending on making lunch without checking with anyone else. We all made for the kitchen to get started. As everyone moved around me, I figured I'd use the time to record what I'd written down while it was still fairly fresh. Orlando died in the room downstairs in front of the vault door. Cause of death seems to be muscle relaxant, or at least that's what Roswell thought. The prime suspect is someone that could approach Orlando while he was on edge, which didn't get us much. Especially because this mus muscle relaxant could only be obtained by a doctor, apparently. Which really only meant it could be Oswin. Orlando, but did Orlando know Oswin? Was it worth bringing up? Looking at everyone around, I wondered if it could have been any of them instead of Oswin. All things considered, I'd much rather think he was behind it than one of my friends. After all, the vault did belong to him. But even then, why? If he wanted to kill Orlando, why would he meet with me after that? Was it because I foiled it? While I was writing down the notes in my notebook, though, something occurred to me. Something that I remembered that seemed off. Hey, Sal? Yes? He wandered over from talking to Roswell about something to stand in front of me, looking confused. Is something the matter? Well... I looked quickly to Haas, who seemed distracted, and to a couple others before gesturing for Sal to follow. I don't understand. What's wrong? I'll be quick, honest. Are you in trouble? Am I in trouble? No, nothing like that. I was just wondering if, uh... So a couple nights ago, you were in the converse... You were in the conservatory, right? I... What? Not that I know of. Wait, what? But... You were there. Maybe at some point during the day? No, I'm talking, like, middle of the night. You were kind of standing there just all, uh... How would I explain it? I rolled my wrists trying to find, find the words. I didn't leave my room. Once I went to my room for the night, I just went to bed. But that's impossible. I saw you there. Didn't seem as though Sal was believing me. He just scratched his head. I know I saw him there. After all, I was on edge after talking to Oswin as it was. What if I show you? The conservatory? Right, then you'll maybe remember? Sal, the sleepwalking mummy. Oh no! Sal didn't seem overly pleased with the prospect, but didn't object to the notion, so we headed upstairs. As soon as we entered, my eyes went to the bookcase, remembering the reason I'd come in here that night. As for Sal... Hmm. What's the matter? He wandered around the room before stopping in place before the bookcase, looking at it. This, something about this right here, feels familiar. Right, that's where you were standing when I saw you the other night. But I was in bed. Sleeping. What makes you so sure, though, Sal? I took sleeping medication. I got it from Dean. Ooh. Mmm. Mmm. Suspicious. And honestly, it's not the first time I've taken it. It normally works pretty quick. There's a rat? Really? I began to fidget on the spot before sighing out. I've been sleeping well since we arrived. Started with Orlando fretting and being worried. Fretting and being excited the day before we arrived. Then him confessing, you worrying about Benson. Now it was my turn to fidget, feeling I was keeping Sal from sleeping soundly. I'm sorry. Don't be. It's been rough beyond that. Would you believe me that I found an axe in my room? I'm sorry, what? An axe? In my bed, yes. You found an axe in your bed? I was yelling and Sal stepped forward to put one of his hands over my mouth to muffle me. Yes, a little under a week ago. I hid it under my bed just, well, waking up next to an axe was worrying enough. And it's still there? Yes, I believe so. I was planning on returning it to the greenhouse later today. But... Who puts an axe in someone's bed? Unless you did it. Sal seemed to think about it for a while before replying. <sighs> Scratching his chin. It might have been me. The more I think about it, the more I wonder, what if I've, what I've been dreaming about haven't been just dreams after all? What have you been dreaming about? 
random things. I remember being in the library at one point. Nothing beyond that, just looking around. There was another time I remember seeing Orlando. Full experience was like I was underwater, blurry and distorted. The library? I looked back at the bookcase before turning to Sal. Is that why you were in here, to go to the library? He shrugged, leaving me to wonder. Was Sal the culprit? Sal? Did anything happen in particular that day, when you were in the library? Not that I know of. Went to the hedge maze, had that argument with Dean. Wait, hold on! You went to the library back then? I thought you meant, like, a couple nights ago. Only thing that happened a couple days ago was, hmm. We had that sleepover, Benson was found alive. And that's all. Oh, I don't think I did all that much given how tired I was. <sighs> I ended up taking some more medication. I frowned, wondering, was this a pattern? Did it mean anything, or was I just still hyped up from investigating earlier? Is, was, uh, was that all you wanted to know? Something still wasn't adding up, and I figured I'd lay it out on the table for Sal. Either he knew or he didn't, but I knew he was in the conservatory that night. I'm not. It's not making sense, Sal. I know for certain you were in this room a couple nights ago. And why were you in this room to confirm that? To go to the library? But... Sal pointed to the door, looking away for a moment before turning to look at me. The library's over that way. You can't get there from here. But what about... I gestured to the bookcase, but all it seemed to get was a confused look from Sal and the sight... Slight tilting of his head. He didn't know. Okay. I'm sorry I can't be more help. I just don't know what else I can offer you. Maybe Hoss would know more? Why Hoss? I remember having a talk with him at some point. I don't quite remember when, but... Nah, the rest of the cat- They know about Oz. But... I stopped listening. Hoss was now starting to get suspicious again. First the library, then what he was doing this morning, now this. I guess I don't have much of a choice, do I? If it helps, I can make myself available if you need to ask me more questions. This seems to be bothering you still. He placed a hand on my shoulder and we left the room, although I didn't feel like I got very far. We headed downstairs and back outside, with Sal heading off in the direction of the pool. Come on. What don't you know? Oh! Roswell! You scared me there! Did I? Wipe that grin off of your face or I'll wipe it off for you. What do you need help with? Struggling with something? Something else, at least given what we did before lunch? I think so, yeah. Do you mind helping me out here? Sure. What's on your mind? I handed my notebook over to Roswell so he could read my notes on what I discovered early on in the day. But I hadn't gotten around to recording anything with Sal yet. Seems less thorough than my notes, but otherwise it's not a whole lot to go off of. But we know- but we know that. Is that what's bothering you? That and I'm worried about Sal. Okay, how do we go up to 19? Oz is dead? Wow. Bitches back. Ah. And I'm worried about Sal. What's wrong with Sal? Is he sick? And we're gonna wait for this ad to run. I should be noticing whenever technical issues run. I should be noticing whenever technical issues happen. I mean, I should be noticing, and yet I am not noticing. What's wrong with Sal? Is he sick? Well, not that I know of, but if he's the one that's behind, you know. For the most terrible ending? Oh no. Well, not that I know of, but he's the one that's behind, you know. Killing people, you mean? Accusing Sal or anyone, for that matter, of murder still didn't sit well with me, but I nodded all the same. Well, why don't we just ask him? Well, he's by the pool, so I suppose we could? Great! Then let's head on over.
Roswell led the way towards the pool, taking my hand in his and dragging me along. Sal, we're here. We... We're here? Sal? Roswell's voice dropped as he asked, but all we got was a grunt from Sal in reply. He wandered over and put a hand on Sal's shoulder. What's the matter? Nothing. Don't worry about it. Roswell stepped back so Sal could stand up with his shoulders slumped. Sal? What's the matter? Nothing, like I just said. Thinking about things. Dave said uh, he was worried about you. Now I kind of am too. It's honestly fine. Just Dave took me upstairs before and now I'm just remembering some things that I'd rather not dwell on. That's all. Anything we can do to help? Not really. I'm just concerned. Now, do either of you happen to know anything about sleepwalking? Sleepwalking? What, like being a zombie? Hey, zombies are completely different. Different? How? Well, for starters, a zombie is a dead thing. Sleepwalking is just autonomy while you're in a dreamlike state. Okay. It's just that. You're asleep, but you're kind of not. Also, you're on autopilot. That doesn't sound so bad. Not normally, but there are some reported cases of it being problematic. Like those people that are sleepwalking, listening to suggestions to others that interacted with them. It's almost like, you've heard of cordyceps, right? The fungus? No. I think I remember coming up at some point in one of Orlando's games. At least I remember something yelling that out when he was in a dungeon once. Possibly the same thing, but let me tell you why this is important. Cordyceps is fondly used as almost like a zombie fungus, and it's not far from the truth. Zombie? Right! The mycelium of the fungus starts replacing the tissue of the host until it affects the brain. Once it's in there... Sal and I looked at each other. I wasn't sure if he was following, but I was a little lost. It seemed like Roswell had noticed, too. How about this? Imagine something that could take over your mind and tell you to do something. That's basically how cordyceps works, and it's that's kind of how sleepwalking works, too. Unsuspecting host, something parasitic giving commands, bam, the same thing. Well, okay. But where does that leave us? Depends on if that helps Sal or not, right? Maybe. I wonder if I've been sleepwalking. And if I have, if someone's been controlling me. Like a puppet? Who'd be doing that? And why? I don't know. I just don't want to wake up in the morning and find out I'm responsible for a massacre of my friends. I gulped at the prospect, finding myself wondering. Could that happen? It sent a chill down my spine as I shook off as Ross shook off as Roswell continued conversation continued the conversation, paying me no mind. Ah, fuck. For what it's worth, you're strong, Sal. Strong enough that it'd probably take a lot for you to kill someone. Even then if you did, it's not like you'd have meant it, right? So, I wouldn't worry too much, even if you have been sleepwalking. Roswell. I think it's safe to say that Sal is the one killing people, Dave. He's worried about the idea much as any normal person would. Even if I've been worrying about it. I see. Well, hopefully that helps. Meanwhile, I need to go help Haas with something, so I'll see you two later. Uh, sure. Okay, yeah, um, there is something going on with my laptop that I don't know what is going on. Seriously, it should not be using as much CPU power as it is. Sal grunted again, and soon enough, Roswell headed off. Once Sal and I were alone, he sighed out, rubbing the back of his head. Well, that... Hmm. I'm sorry, I thought that maybe having a second opinion might help. You were that worried? Maybe too much cash? Maybe. I'm probably going to clear it when stream's over. Like, clear cash. Yeah. After all, what if the worst case scenario happens? She's already dead, so... He trailed off there, making me tilt my head. Who? It doesn't matter, just someone important to me. He sighed, sitting back down and dipping his feet into the water. I'm sorry, but can I be alone for a bit? Oh. 
please. Just, we can talk more later. I headed back inside, leaving Sal by the pool. Something seemed to be bothering him, but I didn't feel close enough to him to really ask anything more. Under any other circumstances, I would have tried to stay and keep him company, but I had enough worries going on. I trudged up to my room, setting aside my notebook and staring at my bed. Thoughts of my dream last night still lingered, and I wondered if there was any hope of me seeing him again if I slept now. What would he say? What could he say? It was only a dream, right? Sighing out, I collapsed onto the floor and spread out. Deciding this was the best compromise between resting but not being comfortable enough to actually sleep. Dave, what the... What are you doing? I looked up to Sal before sitting up and resting back against the side of the bed. Just resting. On the floor. I don't want to have a nap, so... I sighed out, scratching my head. Orlando, can we talk? Uh, sir, what's wrong? He wandered over and sat next to me, placing a hand on my leg. Just finding out about your family, I guess, has been a bit of a shock. Not a bad shock, but something to get used to. He didn't say anything, instead just opting to rub his thumb against my knee. I mean, it's hard to place the words though, right? It's something I just assumed you knew. Never meant to deceive you about it. It's not that at all, but more like, I guess it has me wonder about how things are between us. What do you mean? We're still friends, right? Orlando turned to me, placing his hand other hand on my shoulder. Hang on. Of course we are. Why wouldn't you think otherwise? I don't know, just... I thought back to the conversation we had outside shortly after I woke up, and further back to when Orlando and I had spoke in my room before bed. Are you sure you're okay? I know things... I know the Sal thing hit hard, so... Yep, perfectly fine. Honest. I watched him and the corners of his mouth twitched as he forced the smile, and eventually... Oh, who am I kidding? I'm a mess. Things have been going right for me lately. I know that feeling. I slumped so I was more on my back, with Orlando quickly withdrawing his hand the closer it got to my waist. Really? Did something else happen? I mean, aside from the obvious. Not really, just... I gestured vaguely in the air before letting my arms go limp. I don't know. This has been some vacation so far, huh? Orlando nodded slowly, shifting his gaze elsewhere. Right. What about you, though? How's, uh, your stuff? It's fine, I guess. I flinched, recognizing the phrasing as something I did, and wondered if Orlando was keeping something bottled up. Aside from whatever it was that was bothering him from before. Oh... He shot me a few cursory glances before he spoke again, voice held low. You were really worried that we might not be friends anymore? A little? Like, I wanted to help, but you keep pushing me away, saying you'll handle it and you need time to think, which I guess is okay, but where does that leave me? I don't understand. I want to help. I want to talk. You might be the goach, but aren't I the... the... Gudent? The what? Is that not how that works? A gay student? Orlando snorted, wafts of smoke billowing from his nose as he held back from laughing. <laughs> no, but points for trying. Still, I guess I haven't been overly fair in that sense, huh? I want to know, sure, but I don't want to upset you. If that makes sense, just uh, the more I try and help, the more upset you get, so... Orlando nodded slowly, running his hands through his beard. Well, okay, I guess I should probably let you know something, but don't go telling anyone. I found myself sitting back up, a little straighter than normal as my attention focused on what Orlando had to say. So last night, uh, when I need to think about things, it's about you and Dean. Oh, did, uh... I thought I was a little jealous, and if I'm being completely honest, I'm a little scared that when you two get together, you're just going to disappear. But I won't, you know that! Uh, well, I guess now you do. Not like that, I mean... Would Dean be alright with us cuddling? What about staring a bed to take a nap? Oh, I think I see. But obviously he's your boyfriend, that's, uh, well, that's almost his job to do the things with you. But there's things I like doing too? 
Given how often we did it, I didn't even consider what it'd be like being in a relationship. Sure, the prospect of getting cozy in bed with the boyfriend se seemed great. This was the first time I'd considered what I'd do with Orlando and what I'd do with Dean. Different. Okay, well, how about this? If that's all that's worrying you, then why don't we just cuddle and spend the night together tonight? That's what I was hoping we'd do yesterday, but... I guess I blew that, huh? It's not too late, though, Orlando. And besides, you just want to have pillow talks about boys or whatever, then that works, too. Pillow talk? Really? What? We'll be in bed. On pillows, presumably. Started as a snicker before it rolled into a chuckle and became full-blown laughter. I didn't quite understand, but I soon found myself laughing right alongside him. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> uh, Dave, you might not want to say that. You might never want to say that. <laughs> you should never say that. You should never say that again. You should never say that again, Dave. It is not... It is not what you think it is. It is not what you think it is. Pillow talk is not what you think it is. But I soon found myself laughing right alongside him. Dave, honestly, no. I think I what you mean. Sweet. Then, uh, well, what now? Well, I was going to try beating a boss house stuck on before dinner, but... Oh, can I watch? I'm fine just watching. Sure. Just be ready to be watching the same fight for a very long time. Orlando left and returned with his handheld gaming system. We lay on the bed next to each other, and I just watched as the character he was controlling fought off some angel-looking thing. I didn't quite get it, but what I did notice was that a lot of it was spent in the item menu, with him carefully picking his options every time his turn came up. Not the kind of game I'm into, but he seemed to be enjoying himself. For me, I was happy feeling that things were slowly going back to normal. Before we knew it, and before he was even done fighting the boss, it was time for dinner. We filed into the dining room, and I watched as Tyson went into the kitchen. I went to go help, but Haas soon wandered into the kitchen. Mm. <laughs> uh, does... Does someone want to explain it to him? To them? Does does someone else want to explain it to them? Because I don't really want to explain it. I really don't want to explain it. Can can someone else explain it? Please. We filed into the ki Yeah, I already read that. If Tyson was cooking, chances are that he wouldn't need both of us helping, so I just took a seat and just waited. A couple of the others were still standing, talking to one another, relieving me to my thoughts. It'd been a long day, so I just took the time to zone out and think. There was a lot of information to go through, and not a whole lot of it made sense. I didn't think I'd really gotten anywhere, but for now that was fine, right? At the very least, things seemed to be on the mend with Orlando, so that was something, but... Baby steps was where I needed to start, and any progress was good. When dinner was done and we were all seated, we dug in. Earlier in the day, seeing all my friends like this gave me a great deal of stress, but having things, but having taken things into my own hands, I felt better about things somehow. Perhaps it was just after trying to figure things out, it seemed less impossible. There was one final test, though, and that was where I headed after dinner. Okay, so let's see. I had my notebook in hand and flipped through the pages as I stood in front of the keypad. Almost a week ago, Roswell and I were right here trying to piece together something. I tried a whole bunch of words, but nothing. I reached over and typed in each of our names. Nothing. I then tried the old passwords again to see if there was any change, and again, they weren't what I was after earlier. So what do I know about the vault? Sometimes talking out loud helped, getting all of your thoughts in one place and just laying everything out. No one else was down here as far as I could tell, and I even closed the door to the room I was standing in. <sighs> Oswin said the vault worked. Said the vault worked through trauma. That's right. The vault brings up memories of traumatic events, apparently. Stuff that had apparently survived, though. That might narrow down the list of things this could be, then. But still, 
Looking at my notebook, I went through everything that had happened so far today. Not really much in the way of solid leads, or even anything remotely coming to mind as far as who was behind it. Except for one thing. What if... Oh, fuck. Let me save. I'm just gonna save. It's Sal. He was outside of the entrance to the library for some reason, but why was he there? Was it just a harmless wander, or did someone send him there? I do know that he went to bed after I told him to go, so that counts as a suggestion. Even then, what's the worst he could do? I shook my head. There wasn't enough to go off with just that alone. I needed something more. Maybe if I think about the other passwords had in common, which would then mean... Is there a pattern? Yes. There had to be, but what? Was it a cause of death? Was it the type of word? As a strain to think about any common thread to predict the next one, maybe the pattern was a little too obscure for me to be figuring out what I had with so far. Emo words! The pattern is emo words. Staring at the keypad wasn't helping. I had to put something into at least get me started. What was the worst thing I could think of? What was the worst that could happen? Breathing in deep, I reached out to input something. Input password. Hmm. Uh, wow. But we're here for the bad end. I'm just gonna put in a couple fake passwords just for fun. Oswin. Familiar angry beep sound sounded when I did that. Try again. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna save. I'm gonna save. Here we go. Uh, hmm. I'm trying to think. Oh, here we go. Emo words. Damn it. Yeah, I give up. With a sigh, I backed away from the keypad and chewed on my notebook. It was fine nothing was working right. This just meant that nothing bad was going to happen. Right? I made my way to my bedroom and ran my hands through my fur. I was tired and I was at a loss as, as to how I was feeling. Should I be writing these passwords down? Should I be writing them down? Today it ended up on a bust. Maybe that was a blessing in disguise, all things considering. Either way, I was exhausted. However... It wasn't so bad. Yeah, I should be writing these passwords down, but I'm not. This is going horribly. I should be writing them down. And yet, I am not writing them down. Thank you for keeping track of them. I should be writing them down. And yet, I'm not. Either way, I was exhausted. However, it wasn't so bad. I sighed out a smile forming on my face. I had something to look forward to now, and the moment I looked towards the door, he arrived. He brought a pillow, it looked like, along with what I assumed was his gaming console tucked into the pocket of his shorts. You're here! Yeah, I hope that's still fine, right? He threw me his pillow and stepped out of his pants. I found my eyes wandering down to his underwear while he was distracted, kicking them off to his ankle. It was strange. I was curious, but I wasn't sure if it was just harmless curiosity or something born of everything that had happened over the past couple of days. What? Huh? Oh, nothing. Just thinking. Thinking, huh? Uh... Uh... Yeah, just unwinding, I guess. It's been a while since we've done this alone, right? I guess so. Yeah, just unwinding, I guess. It's been a while since we've done this alone, right? I guess so, huh? Well, what now? I nodded slowly to myself before giving Orlando a quick smile. Shower and then lay in bed? Alright. One shower later and I was clean and relaxed. Although as I stood in front of the mirror drying my fur, I thought about Orlando on the other side of the door. Were we just friends? Was something else happening? These thoughts continued while I brushed my teeth. Wondering if just the situation we found ourselves in was making, sen was making me sense something that wasn't there. All clean. Orlando was laying out on the bed, attention on the gaming system in his hands. He looked over to me for just a second before going back to his game, and I crossed the length of the room to join him on the bed. Good sour. 
It was good, I guess. Why? You're just so fluffy. I like how you look fresh out of the sour. The best I can get is my mane looking the same, but for you, you're covered in it. He said all of it without looking at me, and I took the chance to look him over. Not that I got much of a shot before victory fanfare sounded from his game, and he set it down. So, setting aside his game, he drummed his fingers on his chest as he lay next to me, finally turning to look at me properly. This is what you wanted? I guess, yeah, I like having you around. I'm sorry, I've been a bit of a pain recently. I know it's difficult sometimes. Difficult? How? He breathed in deep before sighing it out, voice barely above a whisper. Being friends with me. I nudged him, flashing him a reassuring smile. It's not all that difficult, at least I don't think so. Maybe I don't think about it so much and just kind of enjoy being around you. You mean it? Of course I do, why would you think it's difficult? He played with his beard for a few moments before shaking his head again. I guess there's always been that worry that you're just my friend out of obligation, or that someone paid you? It wouldn't have been the first time. Who does that, though? My dad, for one. Terry picking friends for his son because other people aren't good enough, or just making them disappear if they're proving problematic. Then, he likes me enough, then? No, I fought to keep you. At some point, he just gave up trying to interfere. I chuckled a little, flattered that Orlando confronted a mob boss for me. Maybe I was blowing things out of proportion in my head, but thinking of it that way made me feel special. It's done wonders for my self-esteem, and I'm sure you can imagine. The last couple of days have, uh, well, I haven't really had a chance to recover yet. I'm sorry, Orlando. It's alright, Dave. Being here with you kind of puts it into perspective, if that makes sense. He put an arm under my head, and I rolled over, cuddling into his chest. He was warm, soft without being fluffy. So, this is helping, like, making you feel better, I mean? Yeah, I think so. I mean, there's other things that could do that make me feel better, but this is the best option. Did you want to talk a bit more, or did you want to just cuddle and get some sleep? I'm thinking sleep might be good, right? Let me go hit the lights. It didn't take him long to get up, switch the light switch off, and then take his spot back in bed right up next to me. His warmth was lulling me to sleep quickly, and I cuddled in closer. Thank you, Dave, you're a great friend. I chuckled rubbing my eyes and yawning into his chest. Is this enough? I feel like I could be doing something more to make you feel better. I just don't want things to be awkward, right? I'll try and, I'll try and be better about it. We lay there for a bit with Orlando just rubbing my back while I cuddled into his front, lingering on the edge of sleep. With the warmth and how he was kneading my back, I couldn't help but moan softly as the tension faded. You're so tense. Uh-huh. He continued unrelenting until gradually he stopped, shifting his weight so he was more on his side. His hands wandered up to my cheek, rubbing it with one of his thumbs. I looked up at him and felt my eyes shut close soon after. I gulped, wondering what was going to happen, but he didn't leave me waiting long. As I breathed out, I could feel him get closer, carefully placing his mouth against mine as he kept me close. This time it was different. Nothing like kissing practice, but something different entirely. This was Orlando, my best friend, but it felt right. He pulled away for all of a second, making me gasp. It was only to shift me more on my back so he could kiss me better, it seemed hand trailing down to my side as the kiss deepened. It was affecting me, and based on what my nose was telling me, I wasn't the only one. Thankfully, I had my nose to go off, as his chest was rumbling happily as he loomed over me. And before I knew it, it was over. He pulled away enough to resume cuddling me close, but he was beside me rather than on top. I was at a loss for words, but his warmth was lulling me to sleep faster than I could piece my thoughts together. Uh, what does Path C mean? What does Path C mean? What does Path C mean? <laughs> oh, it means cookie, okay. What sleep I got was restless. Despite the comfort of the bed, everything running through my head kept me from staying down for too long. Basically, we're fucked. Good thing I have a save. Good thing I have a save right here. I sat up suddenly in bed, having heard a crash somewhere in the house. Path queemy. Oh no! I woke Orlando, it woke Orlando too, or I did as I sat up. He did much the same, wondering what had happened. Did you? I looked to Orlando, putting his shirt back on, while I wondered if what I'd heard was just a figment of my imagination. But that's when we heard the scream. What was that? I'm going to go check it out. Not alone, you're not. What's happening? There was no sense in asking, but my panic prompted the question in any case. It seemed a few of us were in shock of what we were seeing.
Rosswell was on the ground, trembling, and he looked injured. Sal, on the other hand, looked to be in a trance, hands gripping an axe, dripping with something viscous and red. Is that... Whoa, Sal, what are you doing? As Dean made a go for the axe, Sal shoved him back, but Dean didn't budge. Sal, the hell do you think you're doing? I was frozen in place, eyes looking to Roswell. The longer I looked, the more I noticed he was bleeding, and quite a bit too. Guys? How do we- what should we- Help Roswell, obviously! Before any of us could move, Dean yelled out in pain. He was stumbling back, clutching his shoulder where it seemed Sal had bitten him, blood dripping from the wound on Dean's shoulder and from Sal's teeth. I was frozen. Watching as Sal reared back with the axe, and in the next moment... The gods have heard my cry, Roswell is dead, Sal, thank you, Theta, thank you, God of Death, thank you. A pained yell echoed through the foyer, drowned out by the sickening squelch as the axe was removed from Dean's neck. He fell to the floor in a heap, heavy, but most importantly, right on top of Roswell. Dean's yell was replaced by the panic squealing from Roswell as he tried to scramble away but was now pinned by Dean's corpse. Ty held me behind him, acting as a shield between me and Sal. Haas and Orlando were holding each other's hands, with Orlando clinging further into Haas's arms as both horrified to what they'd just seen. When Sal turned back to Roswell, something in me broke, freeing my feet so I could move. I shoved Tyson aside and scrambled to close the distance. He had to grab out for me, but the shock gave me enough time to get out of reach. Roswell! I reached out and he reached out for me as Sal raised the axe. Dave! But it was the last thing he said as the axe came down and silenced him for good. I stood there, shaking, partially covered in the spray of blood that rose from the impact. As calmly as he'd done to Dean, Sal withdrew the axe. From Roswell before turning to me. Sal said nothing, but Tyson was soon to cross the floor and stand in front of me again, working himself up for a fight. Orlando shuffled forward, having peeled himself away from Haas closer to Sal. Val! Val, why? Why did you? As much as I tried to reach out to Orlando, Tyson was much better at keeping me away this time, but it seemed as though Sal made no effort to pursue me or even Orlando. Silence. Nothing but silence. For the faintest of moments, I thought maybe Sal would raise his axe against Orlando, but instead it slipped from his hand, landing with a clatter on the floor. Val? He stared through Orlando, and sure enough, he wandered away, heading outside through the back door and into the yard beyond. Orlando collapsed in a heap on the floor, passing out. There were no words. Sal had just killed Dean and Roswell. It was all I could smell, and as I wiped my face, I looked at my hand covered in Roswell's blood. My eyes went to their bodies still on the floor, and all I could do was stare at the carnage. A massacre, indeed. What do we... what do we... Call the fucking cops! Now! Right! While Haas fumbled with his phone and Tyson was busy yelling at him for something, I wandered off. I let my body go on autopilot to head towards the only other person I knew existed in the house that might know something if they weren't already watching. I made a beeline for the bookshelf, pulling the two books to the passage and heading down into the dark. I was thoroughly on autopilot, retracing my steps from when Haas had showed me the way here the first time. Making my way down to the lower level of the library, I stopped by the table that we'd had our chat. I wasn't sure if I was going to blame Oswin for what had happened, or if I wanted just wanted information. As I looked over to the vault door, though, it was open. Huh. There was nothing stopping me from moving forward, so I pulled the door open and headed on inside. The hallway was dark and it smelt musty. How often did this get used, anyway? I kept my hand on one of the walls as I made my way down, feeling for any light switch or something to make me walk easier. Must have put more weight than intended on part of the wall as I felt something give, and fondling the dark floor I'd found, I gripped the handle of a large door, opening it carefully. 
What lights that were on gave us gave off a soft glow. Actually, we're going to leave off here tonight. One, two, three. Wait, it says we're on path D. I don't know. I'm not I'm not going to question it. All I'm going to say is, what the actual fuck? Just, just, what the actual fuck did I just witness? What the fuck? What the actual fuck? Just, I'm... I'm going to need a minute to mentally process what the fuck I just saw. Just, wow. Wow. What the actual fuck? I don't know. Anyways... I'm I'm going to I'm going to take a minute. I'm going to take a bit to you know mentally process what the fuck I actually just saw. Anyways, stay safe, have a good night. This is fucking terrifying. And I will see you all tomorrow.